Plaintiff Lonnie Jackson III worked with the defendant and the defendant's witness. Lonnie claims the defendant's witness was caught on tape having an affair with one of their co-workers. And after Lonnie showed the tape to their boss, she was fired. In retaliation, he claims the defendant vandalized his car, so he's suing. Defendant James Gewer says when his fiance had an affair on the job, they were going through a rough time. James says from the time his fiance started on the job, Lonnie was jealous of her job responsibilities. So he set out to sabotage her. He's countersuing for attorney fees and defamation. Start with you. The reason we're here today is because my former coworker, James, has a lot of misplaced anger. Um, instead of taking out his aggressions on the people who actually wronged him, namely his fiance, he decided to take it out on me, which makes no logical sense. What did she do to him? Uh, we, she, uh, Brittany was hired on, mm -hmm. his fiance. And about a month in, I would say, she started an affair with another coworker of ours. Every time James would leave, uh, he works in a different part of our company. Every time he would leave, uh, they would invariably start feeling on each other, bumping and grinding, and, uh, and uh, this is the person. Um, it actually, he was bragging about it. Th this is just a picture just to like, prove it. what I'm saying is right. Okay, and th that's what you want to show me on video? That too, uh, like that it actually happened at work. Okay. Because it's only relevant Sir, because she got fired. Sir, does look like you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here what you have. All right, so on the left side, you can see uh, <laughs> Brittany. I'm <his> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they, they, they're sitting at that desk yeah. working? Actually, that's the same desk. You what can't you see it from that angle. He's literally right beside her. And uh, this is just another video to show just how inappropriate it got at work. Clearly not <laughs> working. Uh, clearly more involved in Facebook. So how you get involved? How did I get involved? Well, um... Because honestly, a lot of work wasn't getting done and because that's just inappropriate work conduct, I showed that to my supervisor and that led to her getting fired. Gotcha. All right, so. Uh, May I add something, Your Honor? Sure. Well, actually, this was all a rough time while we were in our relationship. This mm -hmm. has happened. We knew, me, my fiance, and the other coworker were aware of it. That was a personal matter between us. And for her to, her, her job performance to slack really has nothing to do with it. I, I don't understand how your judgment is so poor. You had discussed her cheating on you several times before she came to the court. Well, Apparently, we just admitted that they were going through a rough time. I mean, and like, so like a bunch that of rough times, he's time, tried apparently. to... <laughs> the man's relationship alone. Okay, yeah, uh, we'll I'll, stick I'll with stay what you have. That. And basically, sir, mm -hmm. he does have a right to report intimacy occurring on the job. He's just a guy who wants to... Tell his boss what he believes is wrong activity going on at the workplace. All right, let me hear your side, sir, and then we'll get to the damaged property he's suing you for. Well, in the beginning, I got my, my fiance of job, mm -hmm. actually was in January. She started in January. Uh, we all were working at the time. She had uh, talked to my boss about not doing a lot of the heavy lifting, which Lonnie, was, Lonnie and another coworker were kind of jealous of. And basically, with this situation that he brought up, decided to get revenge and get her fired on actually in June of 2012. All right, sir, go ahead with the uh, property. Okay, so uh, James made it his mission to get me fired as well, you know. How so? As an act of revenge. Well, uh, I guess probably like a few weeks after it happened, somehow he came across the knowledge that my license had been suspended and the nature of our job is driving trucks. So I lost a few days work because of that. You didn't know your license was suspended? I knew it was suspended. I had paid off my tickets and it was gonna take a two days to process, mm -hmm. so. Well, he's like you, he's a concerned yeah, co uh, I understand. employee. <laughs> he's like you. <laughs> and, uh, and in fact, it sounds like what you did was much worse yeah. than what you tattletailed on his girlfriend okay, okay, for doing, yeah. sir. But go ahead. He had a right to do Let's all get to it. your property okay. you're suing him okay. for. So, on September 6, 2012, uh, James punctured my tire. I have a video of that as well. Plaintiff Lonnie Jackson III worked with the defendant and his fiance. 
and he claims after she was fired for having an affair on the job, the defendant vandalized his car, and he has the tape to prove it. Okay, let's see that. All right, that's our parking lot at work. That's my van, the uh, big blue vehicle. And there's James walking towards my vehicle, pulling something out of his pocket. And uh, James kneels down, pops up, walks back and puts what's in his po back in his pocket, which he took it off of his uh, right hip, which, which is where he usually keeps his knife, which is why I think he punctured my tire. And actually in that video, I actually was taking my cell phone out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. at the time, because I had a phone call. Okay. And I, when I witnessed his tire was flat, low. But you came out and went directly toward his car. You didn't come out and look down from 30 or 40 feet. You came from 30 or 40 feet to walk directly to his van. You didn't look down. You didn't do any of that. And what did you do, by the way, after you saw his tire were slashed? As I walked up to the vehicle, I noticed that the tire was low. Mm -hmm. So after that, I walked back. I had mm -hmm. my phone out, so I wanted to put it back in my pocket. Mm -hmm. I got sidetracked by doing some other work in the garage that I was finishing up with the customer's vehicle. <laughs> walked back inside. <laughs> As I walked back into the store, I was, did not want to mention to him because I thought he already knew or I failed to mention because I forgot mm -hmm. that I w witnessed his tire was flat. Mm -hmm. And later that day, when another coworker came in for his shift is when he noticed that the tire was flat and told Lonnie. Okay, and you forgot for the entire day? It, it's something that really wasn't important to me because Yet you walked this out wasn't to my see own it. vehicle. Yet you walked out from your place of work to go and see it. But right. it wasn't important to you. And your purpose for going out there was to help your buddy because you saw something that looked wrong. Right. So you went there to find out what was wrong. And just so happened, you forgot to tell your buddy all day. But when I got back into the garage... <laughs> When I got back into the garage, I got busy doing other things. I know, for the whole car. day, ever. You never told him. When did you finally tell him? I never actually told him. Right, got it. <laughs> Do you wear a knife on your back hip? Do to work for my work. Do you? Yes, yes or no? Huh? Yes, I did. On your right hip? Yes. Okay, good enough. All right, and what was discussed or what occurred afterwards? He was uh, arrested and uh, uh, filed charges and we went to criminal court. Mm -hmm. um, what happened there? In, in criminal court, uh, the prosecutor personally apologized to me, saying that like something got messed up, and uh, so the case was dismissed. Obviously, uh, yeah. Uh, there's there was more video to show uh, mm -hmm. that showed that nobody else had, had approached my vehicle. Since you have I got on that with? I don't okay. have that one with me. It's just detailed in this police report. All right. Uh, find the part that is most relevant, uh, that is most convincing in that police report. And, sir, criminal court requires a burden of beyond a reasonable doubt. In civil cases, which is what we're in today, uh, all you require is a preponderance of evidence, meaning he has to demonstrate that it's more likely than not that you did this. Before I approached his vehicle. He actually was out at either the bank or getting some food and recently returned. A little, like, five minutes before I went out and looked at his vehicle. So it could have happened, especially looking at the picture, the cut that I suppose is a slice is low enough on the vehicle's tread that it could have happened on the road and he wouldn't have even noticed it. Okay or wouldn't have paid attention to it to blame me for the damages done to his vehicle. All right, sir. The problem is that story you gave me sounds extremely unreasonable. That you would see from the building exit his tire, walk over to it, just so happened his tire was slashed, and just so happened you keep a knife in your back pocket. Let me just read what the police department says so I can get you out of here. <laughs> this is the police. I was able to look at other camera angles during the entire time frame in question. Jackson returns in his van from running an errand at 1148 hours with an intact front tire. It was intact. The video shows there were two customer cars that entered the lot and parked near Jackson's van, but neither of the occupants were near the driver's side or near the tire in question. I observed Gewer walk out of the garage, take an object either off of his belt or out of his right pocket and disappear 
near the front driver's tire of Jackson's van. He goes down, he says, I could also see that he had what appeared to be a metal clip similar to those of a folding knife sticking out of his right pocket. Gewer continued to stand by the story that he merely checked the tire to see why it was flat and that he was trying to do a friend a favor, but forgot to tell him. That's what this is. The police, the, the police feel the same way as me. The police feel the same way as me. And your emotional distress was for, I guess, all of this together. This was in your workplace by a right. co-worker. I'm sure you had to go through a bunch of yeah. uh, t he said, she said, no, mm -hmm. yes, police, this, that. That is stress when it's dealing with your job in yeah. particular. Yeah. All right, sir, your defamation for 3000 and attorney fees. How does he owe you? Um, basically, I had to obtain a lawyer to pay for getting my name cleared because of this and um, basically, based him having taken me to civil court through civil court now and through a criminal case before, and actually, Your Honor, before um, this all happened, the accused flat tire, I actually helped Lonnie put a uh, transmission cooler on his. And van. you broke my air condenser. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Plaintiff Lonnie Jackson III worked with the defendant and his fiance, and he claims after she was fired for having an affair on the job, the defendant vandalized his car, and he has the tape to prove it. Yes. I also have a witness, actually, the person in the forward part, mm -hmm. I have a witness statement from him stating that if it, if I would have punched He sees the tire, better than me in the police? That he would have actually yeah, better heard vision. that the tire go flat or... You say he would have heard it if it had happened. Yes, because it would have the amount of slice that was. How far was he from the van? Probably about 20, 30 feet. Okay, and he could hear the. Well, it, <laughs> from the picture that you saw, it was a judge for the big plaintiff. Slice your claim it. is dismissed. Have a good day. He's a lying piece of. And he only gets out for revenge. I gave sir. you every opportunity to handle this like a man outside of court, and you took none of them. The fact that you made all these poor decisions is on you. Any defamation that happened was on your part because you're the you one that acted was stupid. Never mind. You know, I'm done talking to him. He can leave. Thank you. We recently spoke with plaintiff Lonnie Jackson III, who told us that after his case, he transferred to another store and had no further interaction with the defendant's witness. Lonnie said he did run into defendant James Gewer a year after the case, but they ignored each other. Lonnie now has two children and is engaged, but had to put his wedding plans on hold due to the pandemic. However, he's excited to get married and start a new chapter in his life. We tried reaching James, but were unable to do so. So if you're watching, please give us a call.